What's up, this is KB. This is Elias. This is Rob. Zach. And we are Nonpoint. The majority of the show, Rob's kid is always turned sideways. But I have also seen a turn where he's facing the crowd. What makes him do either one? It uh, depends on the size of the riser. If it's an 8x8 eight eight riser, I can do sideways. If it's a uh, 6x8, I can't because uh, it's high out of fall or something like that. It's, uh, I prefer sideways if it's possible. His, his kid is wider than it is deeper. Yeah. So if it, if it cocks, it, it'll... If it cocks, if it, if it cocks. Yeah. It cocks. <laughs> we have heard covers of Phil Collins, Black Sabbath, Drowning Pool, and Pantera. Ever a chance of Nonpoint doing an album like Metallica's Garage Inc.? We were just talking about that yeah, a couple we weeks ago. We were thinking that we were talking about it. Possibly even doing a tour, just covering, but I don't know how that would go. But we love to do it. Yeah, he just said that before. I'd be there. I <laughs> love it. I love it. I think it'd be great. I'd do it. Well, by the way, by the way, we didn't do a Johnny Pool cover. We did a spoof. Yeah, we did a spoof song oh, yeah. on Johnny Pool yeah. song. We, it was, yeah. we could only count to four instead of bodies instead of let the bodies. Which was big hit on YouTube, which yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have so many albums. When do we get the greatest hits? Comes out in March. So weird. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, it's the first two records that MCR, our old label MCA, that put it together. That's the first installment. We're gonna do probably, probably next. Uh, a lot of years of the volume years. one and a volume two. Well, that's literally it says greatest hits volume one. I just cut it off. I'm sorry, yeah. volume one. So yeah. that's cool. March eighth, I think that's the March eighth. Is it? Yeah. So my people are doing a lot of research, or they're psychic. Yes. <laughs> oh, in, le in light of recent teen suicides and the fact that young people idolize rock stars, do you have any advice and for bullied kids? Well, I mean, this one, I actually lost my mom to suicide um, when I was 19. I walked in. Like in a coma, you know, like covered in pills and stuff. And um, if there's one thing that like I can say is that my mom was my best friend. I love her to death. And over the years, it's taken me uh, to grasp that you know, what really happens. I can look back without being you know angry or anything like that. It's it's one of the most selfish ways that you can deal with your problems. Um, suicide is an easy way out, and you can't have that mentality. Everybody that's here has, you know, has their chance to do what it is they're going to do in their life. And the damage and the, the collateral damage and the weight that you leave behind to your loved ones, to the people who you might not think care about you but really do, it's, it's irreparable. Like you, the people that you leave behind will never get over what it is that you did. Um, so I, it's, things are hard. Everybody has a hard life, you know. I mean, but it's what you do and what you learn through your experiences that make you who you are as a person. So that's where you need to find your strength is, is what it is that, you know, that you've been through and who you have around you. And even if you don't really think you have anybody around you, it's like that's even more reason to, to fight, you know, because it's like you have to be able to find the beauty and the strength in yourself to be able to get you through whatever, whatever you're going through. So. I mean, also, too, you kind of got to consider that, I mean, in all honesty, on all honesty, everyone's thought of it. I've thought of it. I'm sure he's the, we've all thought of it. One way or another, somewhere down the line in all of our lives, we've run into that situation where we'd be like, it would just be easier if I was not here. And that's, I think that's, that's like a big thing. It's, a, it's not really that much easier. It's going to get easier. It really does get easier. People really don't realize when you're young and you're dealing with things like fighting with you know, whether or not you're, you know, you're dealing with homosexuality or you're dealing with, you're the only black kid in a white school, or white kid in an all black school. It's like, it, it, eventually you get to an age where things start to level out. And then, and, and who you are as a person and those differences actually define you later and separate you and actually shine, make you shine a lot more in your life. So, you know, it, it's, it's like he's saying, it's rough now, but it, it, people say, oh, it doesn't get any easier, kid. Actually, it really does. It gets a lot easier as you get older because you get smarter and, and you, know, you, you're, you, you learn about yourself more. Most importantly, I would have to say, though, say something to somebody. Tell somebody you're, you're thinking about it because that's the thing, man. People, because they're going to give you the reasons why you should stick around because 
believe me, there's a lot more people that care than you think. You know. That was a good answer. <laughs> Thanks and for I, that. Also, the like you said that you know you're. I think if people want to make believe that you are alone, and, and if you really search, you really are not. There's somebody out there that really cares for you. And and, and it, it could be the the last person you think. You know, it's just I would say just get vocal about it. If you're really thinking that, just start saying it. Start saying it out loud because people that means there's something going on and people need to kind of give you a little bit of attention because there, it, nobody needs to go through that in their heads. Thank you. Thank you. Um, second part of that question. Any of you guys bullied at school? Very well. Yeah. Bullied at school? Yeah. 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 I, I was bullied very mm. well. That's I mean, everybody school. is. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, was, I, was about, yeah. I was about five foot two all the way until I was 18. Or like senior year, I was 16. But yeah, I mean. Are you serious? Yeah. I, I grew up foot in bed over the uh, summer break. And, uh, wow. But yeah, I mean, I was just like always just around. And, uh, you know, then that's kind of where, you know, I turned music and I was a kid with like the long hair and those sort of clothes kind of deal. And then that, you know. You find that you hole. I, I had a typical football player, John Guy, is always, you know, messing with me and all that in our neighborhood. And, you know, I guess, but yeah, I chose the, uh, you know, with that kind of alternative lifestyle that, you know, I don't know. Yeah, find something that makes you happy. Yeah, yeah there's there's a, a good lesson. Find yeah, something that makes you happy. In elementary school, I was bullied, like, from the first grade to, like, maybe fourth or fifth. And I didn't see the kid for a long time. When I got into the high, in the, the ninth grade, I saw that kid again. And he came up to me and said, well, you, did you go to this Christian school or whatever? I said, I actually fly out lives and pretend I didn't know him. Because I just wanted to erase that part of my life. Mm. I was like, I did not want to relive. So while wow, I'm going back to school, this kid had tortured me for five or six years. Mm. Every day. He was the, the, kind of like the toughest guy in school and always nobody would fight him. Mm. And the teacher would walk out. He'd just run over my desk and just hit me. And sat back at his desk. And nobody would ever say nothing because I was scared of him. So I saw him in the ninth grade and I just... Never, you know, I, I no, lied man. to him. No, that wasn't me. That's not me. You know, I, I just don't want to do it. That was all of us, man. Yeah, but man. I would love to see him now. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody who could ask that question on the planet that's not going to say, yeah, to some degree. Right? Yeah. Um, really personal question. When you guys come to Brisbane in February, can I buy you a beer? Massive fan of all your work. Absolutely. Sure. That's Lucas. Look for Lucas. We're going to yeah, Well, Lucas got to look for us. I don't drink, but you can buy Zach my drink. <laughs> yeah, bring, bring a whole page or something. Foster's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> If you could tour with any band past or present, who would it be? And why? Definitely. Definitely. Okay, Tara. Clutch. Uh, uh, because they're Metallica. awesome. Metallica. <laughs> Um, pretty much uh, just uh, our, all our favorite bands. I was going to say Black Sabbath. We actually told totally Black Sabbath. Yeah. You guys have been towards that film? No. We yeah. played shows, but never like an actual just us and them, which is really what we've been wanting for years. And just, and just, and Old school or new school? It doesn't matter. Yeah. They're still the same Deftones. Just half. To me, it is, it is they were the band that, like, Root was the song that brought me into that, you know, into this genre. Not even this genre, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was, like, the core Deftones genre. And yeah. Root was the song for me, you know? At one point, Deftones was out of it. Could happen. Why not? That's actually a good lineup. Um, the song Front Lines, was the inspiration behind that due to the war at hand or from something else that has to do with war? Uh, just so the soldiers. That's pretty much what it was all about. Uh, it, it, you know, people come home from the war and, uh, you know, they discharge or they leave mm -hmm. and, uh, the, you know, or, or, or they get hurt and they come back and, 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 you know, unfortunately I just feel like our country just kind of like goes, thanks. And that's kind of it. And, you know, I, we were at, I can say this, we were at a strip club the other night. And uh, one of the dancers was like, oh, my God, I love your song. I used to listen to Bullet every single time I was in Iraq. I'm like, in Iraq? <laughs> She's like, yeah, a soldier whips out her military ID. A dancer. A dancer. One of our soldiers had to resort to fucking dancing. It's, it's sad, man. Well, let me ask you, I mean, I don't even know if I'll even publish this, I'm just curious, this is almost personal, but fuck, it's an interview, right? Um, a lot of your songs are kind of soldier 
you know, or not a lot of songs, but you do well, we two do songs what, that are songs. Yes, yes, we do a couple that are, and they're kind of, to me at least, when I listen to them, at least I love them no matter what, because you know you can put your own meaning to anything. They do kind of go back and forth, like as far as like, um, of course it all slipped my mind now and I'm sitting here. Uh, as far as like, not to say you're for the war or against the war, but are they all pretty much? They're not for or against war. They're just for soldiers. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Correct. That's a good thing I said that. That is exactly it. Perfect. Yeah, because they, you know, sometimes you walk into situations blindly, and people say, "Hey, you got to stand on this line and shoot if anybody shoots," right. and I can't even tell you why, and they do it. So you know, for whatever reason that we get to do what we do over here, because they're doing that shit over there, it's like, I mean, God bless them for doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to settle that with me, and my wife, was that actually done in the cemetery? Yeah. 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 So I would. I just feel like I where did you think you did it? it? And I could see like, how I can't believe it? you did it in the cemetery. Yeah. There was a kid, a kid actually thought we were photoshopping it. That's what I thought. That's what people I, I was like, there's no way they can make this was, fake. It's too real. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I still can't believe it. I we have Marines, the Marines were Marines that were watching the video, and we were like, hey, you want to be in the video? And they were like, sure. They just yeah. happened to be the color guard that were there for the processions for the day. That's cool. Yeah. You ask nowhere to go. You need to hear a miracle. Something better save you before something bad.